5 minūtes, bet tie ir vieri. Tagalās. Taču ne? Jūt. Īpakārēnā. Nu, vēl pravīrīt šo. Vēl šo. Tie versi ir īsumās. Tā ir daudz viņš ar volumā. Tažu. 167, 166. Tāpēc vēl šī cīs tā būs ir septiāt. Tāpēc vēl šī. Good day from the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. You're looking at the Orbit One team of flight controllers working in tandem with their Russian counterparts half a world away at the Russian Mission Control Center on the outskirts of Moscow in the town of Koryov. This is a good view from a balcony camera overlooking that cavernous room as we are set uh, for the undocking of the Soyuz MSO-3 spacecraft from the International Space Station. Aboard the Soyuz spacecraft at this hour, a Russian cosmonaut and a French astronaut are strapped into the descent module, the center section of the three-section Soyuz vehicle that is currently docked to the Rosviet module of the International Space Station. There's a great view of the, the Soyuz MSO-3. Uh, the uh, white uh, section at the very top of your screen is the instrumentation and propulsion module. Oleg Novitsky, the Soyuz commander from Roscosmos, and Thomas Pesquet of the European Space Agency are strapped into the center section of the Soyuz with Novitsky in the center seat and to his left is board engineer number one, Thomas Pesquet, returning today for a landing assisted uh, by parachutes on the uh, south central step of Kazakhstan to wrap up 196 days in space, 194 days aboard the International Space Station, a journey spanning 3,000 136 orbits of the Earth, 82.9 million statute miles. Oleg Novitsky is wrapping up the second flight in his spaceflight career and a total of 340 days in space on those two flights. Thomas Pesquet, uh, the uh, French astronaut representing the European Space Agency, uh, of course, uh, in this his first flight into space, will have logged 196 days in space. Pesquet also conducted a pair of spacewalks totaling 12 hours and 30 two minutes during his time on board the International Space Station that began with a launch last November from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Left behind on board the International Space Station just a few minutes from now will be uh, the three members of the newly comprised Expedition 52 crew. Expedition 52 uh, begins officially at the moment of undocking, which is scheduled just 15 minutes from now. Peggy Whitson, uh, who was the station commander who handed over command of the International Space Station to her Russian colleague Fyodor Yurchikin yesterday in the change of command ceremony, and Jack Fisher will be a three-person crew for the next eight weeks until the next trio of crew members arrive at the International Space Station, those being Sergei Rozansky of Roscosmos, uh, Randy Bresnik of NASA, and Paolo Nespoli, the Italian astronaut from the European Space Agency, who will arrive at the International Space Station on July 28th following their launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. There is a good view of the Soyuz spacecraft as it travels uh, over the northern portion of the Indian Ocean from southwest to northeast at an altitude of 252 statute miles. About three hours ago, the uh, crew on board the International Space Station had a final opportunity to say farewell to one another as uh, Novitsky and Pesquet made their way uh, uh, to the hatchway uh, at the uh, Soyuz MSO-3 attached to the Rosviet module and uh, began uh, to say farewell to one another. Uh, Novitsky on the left, Pesquet in the middle, and Whitson on the right. Uh, they posed for final pictures, a final opportunity uh, for some hugs and farewells, wishing uh, Novitsky and Pesquet a soft landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan. Again, this occurring just uh, before 2.30 a.m. Central Time today, after which Novitsky and Pesquet made their way into uh, the hatchway of the Soyuz MS-03 uh, spacecraft right behind them. 
And uh, there you see a final inspection of that hatchway that was made by Fyodor Yurchikin, the new station commander, as uh, Novitsky and Pesquet began the procedures uh, to close the hatch, to uh, conduct leak checks, uh, to make sure that we have a, a tight seal at the docking interface uh, between the Soyuz and the Rosviet module at the Earth-facing port of uh, the International Space Station's Russian segment. At 2.31 a.m. Central Time, the Soyuz hatch swung shut. Just about a minute later, the Rosviet module hatch was closed, and uh, the two crew members in the Soyuz, Novitsky and Pesquet, began uh, the work for their pre-undocking preparations. They uh, shortly thereafter suited up in their Sokol launch and entry suits, conducted leak checks on those suits, put on their gloves, and they are all set uh, for the undocking. The procedure for undocking uh, to begin at uh, 5.45 and 30 seconds, when commands will be issued to open up the hooks on the Soyuz spacecraft that have held it in place to the Rosviet module docking port since it arrived back in November. It takes about 90 seconds for those hooks to drive open, after which springs on both sides of the docking interface will push off against one another, enabling the Soyuz to begin to separate from the Rosviet module. There will be a pair of uh, separation burns, as you see in this animation, that will carry the Soyuz to a safe distance away from the International Space Station. For the deorbit burn firing of the main engine, a braking maneuver, a retrograde firing of the engines for four minutes and 37 seconds, that will occur at 8.17 a.m. Central Time, slowing the Soyuz down, allowing it to drop out of orbit. About 27 minutes after the deorbit burn, there will be a pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz vehicle. The center section, of course, you're looking at there, the descent module uh, with its heat shield repelling temperatures building around uh, the spacecraft of some 2,500 degrees as it takes dead aim on its landing site in Kazakhstan. A series of parachutes will be deployed, pilot chutes, then drogue chutes, and then a huge main parachute that will uh, gently uh, allow the Soyuz to drift to the landing site. Uh, and the final uh, technical uh, maneuver will be the firing of a series of soft landing engines just a few feet above the ground, about one or two seconds before touchdown, and the Soyuz will be home. The landing is scheduled at 9.10 and 9 seconds a.m. Central Time, 10.10 a.m. Eastern Time, which will be 8.10 p.m. at the landing site in Kazakhstan one hour before sunset. The weather forecast for landing is ideal. Clear skies are forecast. Winds out of the east-southeast at the landing site about 10 knots. Temperature around 82 degrees Fahrenheit to greet Novitsky and Pesquet. Uh, please stand by one. A combined uh, NASA, European Space Agency, and uh, uh, Russian Search and Recovery Force team uh, is flying in an Antonov 26 aircraft from the staging city in Karaganda to the remote town of Jezkazgan in south central Kazakhstan, after which uh, that team will board a series of Russian Mi 8 helicopters to head down on about a 30 minute flight to the landing zone uh, that uh, will enable them uh, to begin a circular racetrack pattern around the landing site awaiting the arrival of the Soyuz under its huge chute. You see in this map uh, the landing site, the nominal landing site, is about 87 miles, about 144 kilometers to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. In the highly unlikely event that uh, a technical problem would result in a ballistic landing, a shortfall for the Soyuz from its uh, uh, intended landing site. You see it in the shaded region there. There are additional Russian Mi-8 helicopters that would be deployed uh, to recover the crew, again, in the highly unlikely event that uh, they would land short of their intended target. But the Soyuz uh, is up and running, all of its systems activated, ready for physical separation about uh, eight and a half minutes from now uh, that will enable the Soyuz to begin the journey home for Novitsky and Pesquet. The last time only two crew members uh, returned to Earth in a Soyuz vehicle was March 18, 2010, when NASA's Jeff Williams and Russian cosmonaut Max Surayev completed uh, 169 days in space, landing in the Soyuz TMA-16 spacecraft to wrap up Expeditions 21 and 22. They landed in uh, several feet of snow in uh, brutal weather uh, just to the south of the town of Arkalik, uh, in uh, Kazakhstan, uh, they uh, 
landed again uh, as the last two uh, man crew to come home in a Soyuz vehicle uh, during that period of time back in March of 2010. So Novitsky and Pesquet uh, will uh, come home as a two-man crew today to much uh, friendlier weather uh, with temperatures again uh, expected to be in the low 80s, Fahrenheit, clear skies and light winds to greet them uh, to wrap up 196 days in space. Is it better now? Well, not by far. Copy. Then just ask me to repeat uh, if you don't understand something. Copy. Is the floodlight on? And have you selected the wide angle camera? Yes, we have. Awesome. Now let's stand by for 4430 SSVP activation for docking and internal transfer system activation. Copy. And we confirm. 4430. We're just five minutes away now from the uh, command that will start uh, the process of opening up the hooks that have held the Soyuz MSO-3 spacecraft in place since last November. Looks good, right? Yes. You will hear through this uh, translation uh, of uh, the Russian flight controllers in Korolyov. Again, you're looking at a view, a live view of uh, the flight control team uh, in the uh, International Space Station Flight Control Room in Korolyov at the Russian Mission Control Center. Uh, you will hear um, the reference to Kozbek, uh, which is the call sign for uh, Novitsky uh, for his spacecraft. It was from launch to docking and will be today from undocking until touchdown. Regarding radiogram 861, page 8. The uh, RU is negative. While we stand by for the undocking of the Soyuz spacecraft inside the Destiny Laboratory of the International Space Station, NASA flight engineers Jack Fisher and Peggy Whitson uh, have been spending uh, the better part of the last hour and a half brushing up on robotics techniques that they will use uh, for the release of the orbital ATK Cygnus spacecraft on Sunday morning. Uh, both will be in the cupola of the International Space Station at the Robotic uh, Control uh, Center there, uh, with Fisher as the prime and Whitson as the backup uh, for the release of Cygnus to complete its mission. It is now filled with trash. It will be uh, uh, unbolted by ground controllers uh, from the uh, Earth-facing port of the Unity module and maneuvered into its release position. Uh, again, uh, the release time on Sunday for Cygnus, 8.10 a.m. Central Time. We'll have live coverage on NASA television. All right, I really want to see the station. It's great. 30 seconds, actually, one minute till activation. Good view of the uh, Soyuz MSO-3 as uh, the International Space Station flies 252 miles over China in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator, moving from southwest to northeast. We're about a minute and a half away now from the start of the uh, command that will open up the hooks holding the Soyuz in place. 
three minutes away from physical separation. And they needed after the undocking command, is that right? Yes, that's right. Ten seconds. Five. Two. One. On the far right of your screen, uh, you see the signature solar arrays of the uh, orbital ATK Cygnus spacecraft, uh, which again will be uh, unbolted and removed uh, robotically from the Unity module's Earth-facing port on Sunday morning uh, to be uh, released for a week of uh, free flight in support of scientific experiments. 30. Actually, Gosha. Hooks are now driving open. We are hearing you much better now. We're using VHF currently. We transition to VHF. And please, guys, continue reporting. Ten seconds till the separation command. Five, four, three, two, one. The command for undocking has been sent. Hooks are driving uh, to free the Soyuz. In about uh, a minute and a half, springs on both sides of the docking interface will push off against one another. We'll have physical separation. We confirm. S-11 is still illuminated, and A-3 repress of the KDU is still illuminated. Now, please verify that mechanical connection is no longer illuminated. Copy. We confirm that mechanical connection is no longer illuminated. Standing by for physical separation. And we confirm separation. We see that the message SSVP or docking and internal transfer system mode has been completed. We can Over the border between Mongolia and China, the Soyuz MSO3 now has undocked from the International Space Station. Expedition 51 officially over. Expedition 52 has officially begun. The timer is running. Copy. We are moving on to... Undocking occurring right on time at uh, 5.47 a.m. Central Time. Again, the undocking occurring on time as the International Space Station passed over the border between Mongolia and China. Where is the bell? to mark the departure. In two minutes, you're going to have the first burn. Copy and affirmative. Novitsky and Pesquet have begun the journey home. We'll be standing by for the first of two separation burns. This will be an automated eight-second burn of uh, the uh, Soyuz engines. The image is very clear. That's right. Uh, on the camera. That's the beam module. That's right. 30. Agreed.
Less than a minute away from the first of two separation burns that will uh, increase the opening rate of the Soyuz from the International Space Station. That's right. This view now uh, from the Soyuz as it backs away from the station through Russian ground stations. Activation affirmative. Five seconds. We can affirm depot thrusters, gear four command. The uh, first of two separation burns now underway. Again, a quick eight second burn that uh, increases uh, the opening rate of the Soyuz by 0.54 meters per second. And this first uh, separation burn is complete and uh, was reported to be good. The second of the two burns is about a minute and 20 seconds from now, and that'll be a slightly longer burn of 15 seconds in duration. Going on nominally as well. Yes, because she had a We confirm that the maneuver is complete. Copy. Okay, so. Yes, Bob Shaw, so. And we can confirm combined GSO. Affirmative. Moscow was inaudible. Ten seconds. Standing by for the second of the two separation burns. Three, two, one. Yes, the And we confirm. Second burn is underway. And we are turning. 15 seconds into the burn. And the burn is complete. Everything went well with both of the uh, separation burns for the Soyuz vehicle. It also uh, has completed its maneuver as it moves uh, further and further away from the International Space Station. Undocking occurring just a few minutes ago at 5.47 a.m. Central Time. Landing of Novitsky and Pesquet three hours and 18 minutes from now. I am using KSP left. This is Tama, and I'm using the right one. This is Oleg. That's for the command signal matrix. Tama is left, and Oleg is right, and we're sending the E1 command. E1 went through successfully. How copy, Moscow? We are seeing that on our side, too. I am sending the A1 command for depot thruster selection. All of the uh, Soyuz systems functioning perfectly so far as Novitsky and Pesquet uh, separate uh, in steady fashion from the International Space Station. Expedition 52, now a three-person crew under the command of Fyodor Yurchikin with NASA astronauts Jack Fisher and Peggy Whitson. They will be a three-person crew for the next eight weeks until the arrival on July 28th of uh, Sergei Rozansky, Randy Bresnik of NASA, and Paolo Nespoli, the Italian astronaut who will be flying for the European Space Agency. The Soyuz uh, and the International Space Station now moving into an orbital sunset just uh, off the far eastern coast of Russia. Message is no longer illuminated. We'll soon begin a northwest to southeasterly swing across the Pacific Ocean. Uh, rude, uh, rotational. Translational hand controller uh, is in the operational mode. For uh, spherical tanks, we have 165, 165, and for propellant, we have 466.
Oleg, you are a go to send get for command. Copy. Could you send it? Yep. Translational hand controller has been placed in the transport position. Get for command. Is it here, right? No, no, not there. I won't give it back to you. A8. G4 command has been sent. Semi is unintelligible. It's pretty loud for me. Actually, even louder than usual, I think. It seems like everything's fine to me, says Oleg. It's pretty loud for me. Oleg, Toma, I just wanted to congratulate you with such a beautiful undocking. Our next VHF, uh, during our next VHF compass, you will be in dynamic mode for descent. And we will start working the procedure uh, for descent um, during our next compass. Copy. Toma, could you please turn on the lights here? What? The light. Awesome. Thank you. That uh, the voice uh, of an interpreter. Uh, Good luck to you, to you guys. Reporting uh, what uh, Russian flight controllers are saying to the crew on board the Soyuz MSO3 that you see there, uh, fading further and further away from view as it continues to separate from the International Space Station following its undocking nine minutes ago. No, I'm just saying good luck, guys. Safe landing. This is Fyodor speaking. To you and to Tamar. Fyodor, thank you so much. We'll see you soon. See you on the ground. Well, let's just say your departure was just a beauty. That's good to know. I thought it was Gosha. And uh, best wishes being uh, radioed uh, between Fyodor Yurchikin, the new commander of the International Space Station for Expedition 52, and uh, Novitsky and Pesquet aboard the Soyuz MSO-3 as uh, they continue to move uh, away from the station. The deorbit burn uh, that will bring uh, the Soyuz uh, home uh, to a landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan, that deorbit burn, a four-minute, 37-second retrograde firing or a braking maneuver of the Soyuz engines is scheduled two hours and 19 minutes from now at 8.17 a.m. Central Time, 9.17 a.m. Eastern Time. Again, it will be a four-minute, 37-second braking maneuver uh, at an altitude of 264 miles. It uh, will change uh, the Soyuz uh, velocity, slow it down by 128 meters per second, enabling it uh, to begin to drop out of orbit for its descent back into the Earth's atmosphere.
The uh, Soyuz MSO-3 with Oleg Novitsky and Tomas Pesquet on board, uh, continuing to fade from view, now just about uh, out of the field of view as uh, we are well into a uh, nighttime pass for the Soyuz and the International Space Station. Just to recap, uh, the uh, Soyuz undocked from the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing port of the Russian segment of the station at 5.47 a.m. Central Time, 6.47 a.m. Eastern Time, right on time, as the station uh, flew 252 statute miles over the border between Mongolia and China. This uh, came about three hours after uh, Novitsky and Pesquet said uh, farewell to uh, Peggy Whitson, Fyodor Yurchikin, and Jack Fisher, who stay behind now as a three-person crew for Expedition 52 uh, for the next eight weeks until the next trio of residents of the International Space Station are launched to uh, bring the station back to its full complement of six crew members. The uh, hatches uh, between the Soyuz and the International Space Station uh, swung shut about three and a half hours ago, setting the stage uh, for the undocking. The next order of business will be uh, the deorbit burn that is scheduled for 8.17 a.m. Central Time, just two hours and 15 minutes from now. Uh, that uh, deorbit burn uh, will, s will then uh, be followed by the Soyuz uh, descending out of orbit uh, for its high-speed entry back into the Earth's atmosphere and a landing, parachute-assisted, on the steppe of Kazakhstan, where search and recovery teams and support personnel from NASA and the European Space Agency and Roscosmos will be uh, standing by to recover the crew. It's worth noting that uh, after landing, uh, which will occur just one hour before sunset at the landing site in Kazakhstan, at uh, the landing scheduled uh, for uh, 9.10 a.m. Central Time, 8.10 p.m. in Kazakhstan, uh, Novitsky and Pesquet will be uh, brought inside a, an inflatable medical tent that will be erected uh, just about 100 yards or so away from the, the capsule itself uh, where it touches down. Uh, they will be helped out of their uh, Sokol launch and entry suits. Uh, they'll receive preliminary medical exams. Uh, they'll get into more comfortable flight uh, suit clothing. And then they'll board uh, individual helicopters for a two-hour flight uh, from the landing site back to the staging city of Karaganda. Once back in Karaganda, Kazakhstan, uh, they'll have a, a short welcoming ceremony that is a Kazakh tradition for returning Soyuz crew members. Then they'll split up with Novitsky boarding a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft for a flight back to Chukalovsky Airfield, a military air base just uh, outside of Star City, Russia, which is the Russian Cosmonaut Training Center. Uh, Pesquet will board a European Space Agency aircraft for a direct flight from Karaganda back to the European Astronaut Center in Cologne, Germany. So with the Soyuz uh, safely on its way, heading uh, for its position in orbit, and the deorbit burn just two hours and 14 minutes from now, we'll wrap up this broadcast, and uh, we'll uh, tell you that we'll be back on the air at 7.45 a.m. Central Time, 8.45 a.m. Eastern Time, for the deorbit burn and the landing of Expedition 51 crew members Oleg Novitsky and Tomas Pesquet. Until then, we wish you a good morning. This is Mission Control, Houston.